Hello and welcome to the tutorial on how to start using Brain Access Board. Brain Access Board is an application that allows you to connect and stream data from Brain Access device, collect data from other sources, and also has very useful functionality for setting up EEG experiments. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to connect to Brain Access device, uh, stream and record data, and also go through some useful functionality of the board. If you haven't installed the Brain Access Board software yet, you can find the board on our website, brainaccess.ai. Uh, go to resources and downloads section. And here we'll find the newest version of the Brain Access Board software, both for Windows and Linux operating uh, systems. Uh, download it, install it, and then you'll be ready to use it. This has been already done on this computer, so I'll just uh, go ahead and start it. After initialization is done, um, browser tab will pop up uh, with the main interface of the board. The board has three main sections, so your configuration, which you will use to connect to brain access device or collect data from other sources, also uh, do the recordings. Uh, application section, which has useful apps, such as EG data viewer, file converter, and other, other examples for EG and BCI applications. And finally, there is a resources section where you can find some useful information and the documentation. So let's go back to the configuration section. Uh, this is the one we'll concentrate uh, most uh, in this tutorial. So here you have uh, different sources you can collect, uh, select from. So we'll start with uh, Brain Access, which will allow you to uh, connect to Brain Access devices. Uh, so here with me, I have uh, uh, Brain Access EG headband. It's fully integrated band, so I'll just turn it on first. And now I can do uh, the scan. After the scanning is done, the, uh, the Halo and other brain access devices will appear in the list. So let's, let's select the Halo uh, and you are ready to connect. I'll, I'll put the device as well. So once connected, uh, you'll see a device tab uh, appear in the connected devices list and it has some useful information. For example, the source, so that's the name uh, of, of the EG data stream from this device. Uh, so this name will be the same for lab streaming layer stream. Uh, it has other information about the device, including the battery level. Uh, if you press this graph button, it's a shortcut to the Brain Access Viewer. Uh, after some time, the viewer will pop up and you can uh, check the signals. Yeah. Uh, once you finish working with the device, you can remove the device from the list by clicking uh, this X button here. Here we have some advanced settings called the template settings. Uh, here you can change uh, some of the parameters of the device and you can save them as a template. So you can have a different template for uh, different experiments uh, for different uh, setups. Uh, so here you have a couple of parameters you can change. Uh, firstly, you can change the electrode name. This is not very applicable for the halo where the electrodes are fixed, but for brain access kits, you can position electrodes in different position uh, and location, and then you can change uh, the names accordingly. Uh, you can also deactivate some channels if you prefer, and if you don't want to stream uh, a lot of data. Uh, the bias setting is basically uh, choosing the electrode that you want to use for the active noise suppression. 
Uh, please remember choose the electrodes that only have good EG uh, signals. Um, and then the last is the gain setting. So the higher the gain, the better amplitude resolution. But the downside is that if you choose too large of a gain, because of the DC offset, you can saturate the channel. So let's try and connect to the device again. So here we have a data recorder. It's uh, quite straightforward to use. Uh, so here you specify the directory the data will be saved. Here you can enter the uh, task name. So let's call it baseline EG, for example. Uh, here you can uh, select subject ID and then have uh, session and run numbers. Uh, these will create separate folders for uh, different recordings. So once you're ready, just press start recording. Uh, once you've finished with all the experiments, just press stop recording. The data is saved in our internal, internal format, but you can use the file converter that I mentioned earlier to convert to all the different standard formats. You can use Brain Access Board to connect to multiple devices as well. Uh, here I have uh, a Brain Access Max device available as well. So let's connect to it. Once connected, it will appear in the list, connected devices list here. Uh, and what's important, the data streams from both devices will be synchronized in time. So you can have multiple recordings on multiple people uh, that are synchronized in time. This allows for hyperscanning applications, for example. However, the number of the devices you can connect to is limited by the Bluetooth adapter. Nonetheless, you can have a separate computer running Brain Access Board and you can connect to the third device. Once you connect, the data is also streamed to the lab streaming layer on the local network. And this brings us to the another type of source you can have on the board, uh, which is called lab streaming layer. So if we had another third device um, uh, streaming data from on another computer, you would see it here. And then you can uh, connect to it as well. And in theory, then you can have many, many uh, devices collected by a single instance of the brain access board. All that data will be synchronized and simultaneously you can do the whole recording. Lab streaming layer can be used for sending annotations uh, of a particular event as well. Uh, so for example, you can have another computer running a stimulation program and then you can send annotations or then you know, a particular frame, for example, is shown. Uh, and this stream can be recorded by the board as well. You can specify the stream name, name here, and then if you press, press start, then it will be automatically added to the connected device list here. And again, if you're gonna do the recording, it will be saved simultaneously and you'll have all the data synchronized. And there is uh, the third type of source you can have, which is called synthetic data. Uh, basically, as the name suggests, it just generates uh, some random or uh, some predefined uh, function uh, and you can connect to it. And basically, this is used uh, either for debugging purposes or if you're designing some pipeline, collection pipeline, but you don't have any physical devices available uh, with you. So thank you very much for watching. Please visit brainaccess.ai for more information or contact us directly.